Oh man, I'm already rambling. I'm going to have to edit so much. Hi, I'm Psychic Cosplay, and I love Doom. If you follow me on social media, like Instagram or Twitter, or follow me on Twitch and have been in my Twitch streams, you might know my undying love of Doom. And not just the book, the whole Dooniverse. So there are over 19 books. I own all of them. I've read them all multiple times. I've seen the 1984 movie, I've seen the 2000 miniseries and the 2001 or 2 Children of Dune miniseries, albeit that one I haven't seen in a while. I consume all things Dune all the time. Like I pretty much am constantly rereading the series. It's it's a problem. If you're not aware, the trailer for the new Dune movie just dropped a couple days ago. And uh, I thought I'd give you some of my thoughts on the trailer and sort of a kind of a Cliff's Notes synopsis on what Dune actually is, the, the universe that Dune is set in, and uh, why you should read the book. And just a little bit of history of, of Dune and popular culture and the, uh, the struggle Dune has had to be adapted from a book into visual media. So I'm going to give my thoughts on the trailer first and then I'm going to kind of get into what Dune actually is, the whole world, why it has had such an issue being adapted, and hopefully this will make you even more excited for the movie. I know I'm super excited for the movie. The trailer looks amazing. There are some weird nitpicky things that I have uh, issues with because I'm such a huge Dune nut, but it doesn't really matter at all. But first off, the casting of the new movie looks amazing. Um, Timothy Chalamet as Paul looks like he's going to do an amazing Paul. The rest of the casting is, is amazing. The trailer, it looks fantastic. I am so happy that they have given Dune another chance at another movie. The 1984 movie is pretty classic and kind of a cult thing at this point, but the technology back then really did not give Dune its fair shake. It really didn't do the movie justice. And having technology kind of finally catch up to the ability to portray the story accurately is amazing. The trailer actually doesn't really kind of delve into the world of Dune that far. And I know that's on purpose because they're trying to attract a wider audience who, you know, doesn't necessarily know what Dune is or what it, what the, what the background is, what's going on but they were able to kind of accurately portray the conflict that's happening in the book. And that really lends itself well to a wider audience. And I'm, I'm really glad that they're actually aiming it so broadly so that more people get into this crazy fandom. <laughs> that being said, there's a lot that they left out. There's a lot that I think it's so crucial to the universe of Dune that they didn't really even mention that I'm not sure why they left out, but we'll, we'll see. You can't judge how they adapted the book by a trailer. I'm glad to see that they've, they've been fairly faithful to the source material. I know that the director, Denis Villeneuve, is actually a fan of Dune, has been wanting to do this project. So it's, it's not just, oh, they greenlit this project and then he found a director. I mean, he wanted to do this. I'm also really hopeful for the movie because of the director, because of Denis Villeneuve and his track record with sci-fi. Uh, Arrival is an amazing movie. If you've never seen it, go watch it. Blade Runner 2049 was amazing. And I think because it was received really well by critics and it's an amazing movie, but it just didn't quite hit with the general audience as much as I think these studios were wanting it to. So I can see why the trailer is posited in this more general manner. That being said, there's a couple of crucial things that are basically not mentioned at all in the trailer, um, which is like the center of the Duneverse, which is spice. You see it at the very end when Paul picks up a handful of sand and there's like this like sparkly orange stuff in the sand. That's the spice melange. This is a thing which is only found on one planet, 
dune or arrakis and it is a drug it's basically like you took all of the drugs ever put them together and made it into this thing that's this amazing miracle drug it can expand consciousness it has geriatric properties it can it makes you age less um, it keeps your mind more sharp it can lead to superhuman abilities and so this the spice is vital to the universe um, it's what enables faster light travel it is what gives all of these different factions of humanity these powers that they have it's this it's really kind of hard to explain in a short video other than read the book that they left out and i was a little kind of shocked that they left out that but i can understand this you know they're trying to appeal to a wider audience i thought the trailer was amazing it looks amazing i had some weird nitpicky um things with it in in the teaser that they released a couple days prior to the um the full trailer you can hear paul saying these words i must not fear fear is the mind killer um, and that is the beginning of what's called the litany against fear it's this thing that keeps popping up all over the books all the time it's this kind of like central thing it's a central tenet of this order of women called the betty jesuit um, which the trailer doesn't mention but is a major player in the books they kept messing with the wording of the litany and it was driving me insane <laughs> the super fan it doesn't matter. I'm just being me. What you need to know about Dune, if you've never read the book and want to go watch the movie. Well, there's a lot. The driving force of this entire universe is the fact that thousands of years in the past, there was this war against machines. Basically, humans made AI. AI rose up against humanity, tried to enslave humanity. Humans fought back humans won and now there are all these restrictions on computers you you cannot use computers to do stuff like the the there's this uh there's this tenet in the the universe thou shalt not make a machine in the likeness of a human mind basically no more ai you cannot make ai uh there's these really strict unwritten rules um, against machines. So there's this general hatred of machines that came about from what's known as the Butlerian Jihad. Um, it's the, mach the machine crusade, the Butlerian war, whatever you want to call it. So instead, humans have evolved themselves to fill the roles that AI once filled. So we've got things called Mentats, which are human computers. Um, we've got Sukhs, which are these amazing doctors and we have the Bene Gesserit which is this order of women who have superhuman abilities they're often called witches because a lot of people don't understand what they're actually doing and how they do it um, and these three orders of humans plus the aristocracy and trade federation and the guild kind of are what rule the universe and play for power between each other and amongst all of this is the spice the spice is what this whole conflict on dune is about dune is the only place where you find the spice the only source of spice in the entire known universe and it is so super important and every hundred years the emperor of the known universe gifts or well politically moves the uh fiefdom of dune between royal households between uh dukes and barons and different different houses so there's a uh, feudal system of government in the universe so there's an emperor and he has his own army and then there are these other houses of the landsrad uh these are royal households that rule planets so house atreides which paul is a member of rules the planet caladan it's not like any sort of major house atreides isn't like one of the most powerful houses in landsrad they don't rule a very powerful planet however duke leo atreides is very popular amongst the landsrad and the emperor is jealous of that popularity and he's afraid that the Atreides might try to take over 
the empire. So House Acarino is the imperial household. They ruled the Imperium for I think it's 81 emperors, so it's a really long time. You have these orders of humans which are highly specialized and they are have possessed super, oh, superhuman powers. Um, you have this feudal system of government um, that's balanced between a, the imperial household, these other royal households, uh, the members of the Lanzarad. There's also something called Chum, which is the Combine Onnit Ober Advancer Mercantiles. I had to look that up because I can never remember what the heck that stands for. So this is balance of power between the imperial household, the Lanzarad, Chom, uh, the guild, and the Bene Gesserit and like Mentats and Sucs are kind of populated in there a little bit. I haven't even gotten into what the guild is yet, which is the guild of navigators which provide all transport within the known universe. So they possess the ability to fold space, which basically makes fast and light travel possible. And they're able to do this because of the spice. So the guild has what they're called guild navigators. They're humans which basically live in the spice and they're capable of seeing a safe path through folded space. So if you don't have a navigator, you can fold space, but you might run into like a star or something and explode. So you, you kind of need a navigator to safely navigate space. So there's this kind of fine, delicate balance of power. In amongst all of this is the planet Arrakis. So the emperor doesn't directly control Arrakis, but he controls what family controls Arrakis. And like I said, every hundred years, he changes the fiefdom. He changes who rules Arrakis. And for the last 80 years, it's been House Harkonnen, who are the sworn enemies of House Atreides. Uh, there's a blood feud there that goes way back. And they basically hated each other for thousands and thousands of years, uh, basically since the Butlerian Jihad. Um, and so the emperor is making House Harkonnen turn of the planet over to House Atreides. The Atreides know this is a trap, basically. Um, they know that, you know, the Harkonnens won't give up Dune without a fight. So the Emperor is making House Harkonnen turn over the planet, right? Uh, but at the same time, he's jealous of Duke Leto, House Atreides, and he wants to, you know, get rid of the Duke without the Lanzarad knowing it was him the Harkonnens are turning over the planet, however, the Emperor is giving the Baron Vladimir Harkonnen a bunch of troops, known as the Sadakar, to go and, once the Atreides have taken over Dune, go and take it back. So basically, the Emperor is engineering a coup to return control of the planet to the Harkonnens. That's easy to follow, right? Maybe? So that's kind of the setup for Dune. Basically, the Atreides are taking over Dune. The Harkonnens don't want to give it up. The Emperor is trying to get rid of the Duke um, without getting in trouble with the Lanzarad because of the Great Convention, which is every great house, every great royal house has atomics. They have atomic weaponry. But the Great Convention basically says if you set off atomics, the whole power of the Lanzarad will come together and attack you. So basically, if the Emperor directly attacks House Atreides, the Lands Red would basically uh, rally together and remove the Emperor. So there's this really, really delicate balance of power. Dune's a lot about, like, sociopolitical maneuvering and balance of power and a lot of commentary on uh, religion and power and the power of religion and politics and like the balance of power and power play and politics. God Emperor, holy crap. Anyway, uh, if you get all the way through to God Emperor, I salute you. Okay, so there's this really kind of weird complex like power struggle. Amongst all of this is Paul Atreides. He's the son of Duke Leto Atreides and his bound concubine, the Lady Jessica. Lady Jessica is a Bene Gesserit sister. So I mentioned the Bene Gesserit a couple times, um, and basically what they are is sort of like a shadow society, uh, where they control a lot of power and pull a lot of strings, but they're not directly in charge of anything. And that's because the Bene Gesserit have this hidden agenda, which is to create a superhuman being. 
So the Bene Gesserit uh, have this power of unlocking genetic memory. And throughout their history, they found that only women can do this. So the Bene Gesserit is a sisterhood, it's a matriarchy. And these women have the power to access what they call other memory, what is their previous lives down the maternal line. So they have this memory ad infinitum all the way through all of their female ancestors. And this is a really powerful resource, but they found that men can't do this. There's, there's no male equivalent of a Bene Gesserit. So what they're trying to do is breed one. They're trying to create a guy who can become basically a male reverend mother with the additional power of being able to predict the future or know the future. He has the power of prescience, being able to see the future and manipulate the future. And they want to be able to control this super being. The title of the super being in the books is called the Quasar Tatarak. Yes, my phone will auto spell that for me. Amongst all this is this Bene Gesserit breeding scheme to create this superhuman being, this Quetzalcoatl. So they're really, really close to creating this Quetzalcoatl. They were expecting this to happen within a couple generations. So they had ordered the Lady Jessica to breed with the Duke and create a daughter. And this daughter would then be bred to a Harkonnen male. And that was supposed to produce the Quetzalcoatl. However, guess what happens? So we have this like massive geopolitical scheme thing, people taking over planets, one in the back. And then there's Paul, who's supposed to potentially be this superhuman male Bene Gesserit. He will have all the powers of a Bene Gesserit, plus the added ability to see the future. Um, and then we enter into, you know, going to the actual planet and then like shit hits the fan. And I don't want to like spoil too much because if you've never read the book or never watched the 1984 movie or the miniseries, um, at this point, I mean, I might have spoiled some stuff, but anyway. The first new movie is only covering the first half of the first book. There are six books in the original series, and then uh, Frank Herbert's son and another guy have co written a whole bunch of other books. But anyway, that's kind of like the background synopsis of what you kind of need to know, I think, I hope. So Dune has had a checkered past with being developed into visual media. Uh, it's one of the best-selling sci-fi novels of all time. It was written in 1965, and I'm not entirely sure how many copies it sold, but it's one of the, like, it's, it's recognized as being one of the best sci-fi novels of all time. But because of the way that Frank Herbert writes, his world building, how detail-oriented a lot of things are, how, like, complexly political everything is, it's never fully really translated well into a visual media. Sort of famously or infamously, Alejandro Jodorowsky tried to make a version of Dune in the 1970s that never actually got made. If you are looking for something really interesting to watch, go watch Jodorowsky's Dune. It's a documentary on how this movie never got made. Um, but fun fact, the movie Alien would not exist if it wasn't for Jodorowsky trying to make Dune because he brought together the creative team that ended up creating Alien. So they wouldn't have made Alien if Jodorowsky hadn't tried to make... So Jodorowsky tried to make a version of Dune and it was gonna be like really weird and trippy and he wanted Orson Welles to play the Baron and that would have been amazing, but it never got made. And then in the early 1980s, David Lynch made his version of Dune, which uh was a fairly faithful adaptation of the first book but he tried to cram so much of that book into the movie that when it came out they actually handed out like cards of terms to people going to the movie like there was like a cheat sheet that you got when you went to the movie of like what all these words are, what they mean, like Bene Gesserit, Muad'Dib, Quisitaterak, uh, Guild, Chome, Lance, like, like all of these terms. 
And also there's, the, it's it's pretty infamous, which is the the introduction to the movie by Virginia Mardson, um, who play, plays Princess Irulan, who's the daughter of the Emperor Carino. And it, you know, it, she gives this kind of like plot synopsis um, at the very opening of the movie. And that was because people just couldn't really understand what this was, what they were trying to do. Um, and I love that movie, it's great. There's some things that they obviously changed from the books, which was actually totally fine, but it just, they, they tried to do too much. And then you come to the early 2000s sci-fi miniseries version of Dune, which is a lot more faithful to the books in terms of like what the characters are actually doing, what's going on, but it, it suffered from being a sci-fi miniseries in the early 2000s. And, um, yeah, I think the Children of Dune, um, the follow-up miniseries was better um, than the actual Dune miniseries, which was uh, actually starring James McAvoy, by the way, um, as Leto II. Uh, spoilers. Since then, there's been various rumors of Dune's getting made into a movie again. Oh, it's not made, getting made into a movie again. It's, it is, it's not, it, it is, it's not. And then a couple years ago, they finally greenlit it and they got the Villeneuve on board. And I've been so happy and just waiting for the trailer and waiting for it to come out and then <laughs> pandemic. And so we don't actually have a release date for it. It is currently slated for a December 18th release. However, I don't think that's happening. I think it's getting pushed to spring, but um, it's it's there. There's a trailer, it, it's coming. I am so excited. I'm so happy that it's finally kind of like, is this going, is this, this, this curse going to be lifted? We shall see. I hope so. I have really high hopes. I have really high hopes in the director, in the cast. They've actually split the book into multiple movies. They're not trying to like cram everything into one movie, which is just not possible considering I've been sitting here rambling for a half an hour about just kind of the background of the Duneverse. Um, so, so yeah, it's, I'm so super pumped and I'm so happy that there's finally a trailer and that the movie will get released. I've been waiting since I was a teenager for this and it is finally happening. I'm so happy. Uh, that was a ramble about Dune with SciCat Cosplay. I know this is not the normal uh, content that I put out on my channel, but I am such a huge Dune nerd that I have to talk about it. And at least I can talk to the internet about it. So thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Maybe I don't, uh, anyway. <laughs> Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification for the next time I put up a new video. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.